Jesus Christ, darling. Hi. Well, hello, let's say. Let's Check it out with the onesie. I know. Isn't it awesome? First looks like a new trend. You, you are, do you realise you are LGBTQ plus compliant? Yeah. Yeah. Wow, you know, LGBTQ plus plus A plus plus, I believe, darling. Is it? Yeah. I don't know. I've lost touch. I don't know. Can you not just say she's an ally because it just helps? Yeah, yeah, I'll put you as an ally. Oh, there we go. I'm happy to do my bit. But are you a binary ally or not? <laughs> I haven't quite made my mind up yet. In my personal no. opinion, I find that most things when it comes to uh, opinions and emotions, there is no such thing as a binary choice. There's only grey areas. Sure. Well, that, yeah. that was a conversation killer, wasn't it? That is. It's true though, isn't it? It's, it's like reality, is because you can never truly perceive what reality is because it's only subjective on what you can see. Yeah, so is. someone else's reality, your reality is different from my reality and you can see next to it. It is. Yeah. The same so as... in the same way, is it like, are you a binary or a non-binary ally? Like surely if you've got emotions, you're never going to be fully on board with all of it because otherwise you're not an ally, you're a blind follower. Mm. And there's a difference. So mm. if you're a being conscious ally and you're actually being uh, rational and logical about these things, then surely it's only gray areas because you have to treat everything as individual. And the bit that gets me is in the name of inclusion, we actually enforce segregation by labor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> that's labor a, that's is one of the worst that... things that you can do. Yeah, exactly. Because if it shouldn't matter, it shouldn't matter. So why do you, why does there need to be a label whether you're LGBTQ plus or, what, or binary, yeah, non-binary? It, 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 exactly, it doesn't make any, does, shouldn't make any difference. Away altogether. It yep. creates an us and them situation, and as soon as there's an us and them situation, it can only ever end in an argument. Yeah, true. And then you end, then you end up with mothers and fathers where they won't name their kid male or female at birth because it needs to get old enough to decide for itself. Himself. It's oh, their self, self actually. Their they self. call them babies now, don't they? Yeah. Babies. They, yeah, because yeah. They're, they're referred to as them as in the non-binary thing. Oh, and yeah. Yeah. So until they can choose for themselves. But I think Australia's got that already in their best. Yeah. Well, you things. can do it in Sweden and stuff. You can actually do it without your parents' permission. But yeah. do you know, if you fly through the buyer places like that, and your passport says that your plans, oh, or a man walks through... In with the female, this is a female yeah. with the female gender on their passport. They, they get locked up. Well, of course yeah. they would, because over there it's still illegal. So, yeah. mm. so okay, so then. So you, it's better just to be male or female? Well, not only that. And that yeah, yeah, or don't go on holiday to Arab countries. Yeah, exactly. Don't do it. Don't, don't be stupid enough to try yeah. African countries. Yeah. So yeah, African but it's also yeah, like Nigeria and stuff like if, that. If, Transverse even Turkey, I suspect. Yeah. Turkey to a degree, yes, but not so much because it's more secular. It's been secular up until recently. So the problem with Turkey and plus in places like that is it's almost gone the other way, where in the resort areas you get the locals who are utterly disgusted because you get people walking around with like a G-string bikini while, be, while they're trying to do their shopping with their kids. But it's it's because it's separated areas. It, the problem then is again because of the because of the the um, that, that's the behaviour that gets noticed. Uh, it, you then end up where it comes um, the standard where they they then assume everybody's in the kind of eighteen to thirties get as drunk as you can. Go to places like um, um, uh, well no so like in Turkey and places you've got Iklamo who where we went and then and then you've got like uh, Marmaris which is mm. next to it. And the bars there, you like you've got literal like underwear pinned to the wall kind of stuff. Oh, okay. Like just, just underwear. yeah. And the problem is because then you get everybody who then does the whole you know sunbathing topless and all the rest of it is that then all of the, the the men over there and the waiters immediately assume that that you're that way too. So then you get you get yeah. an issue then. So and then is whereas when I went to Egypt there was a bit more about. Um, People were a little bit more conscientious about what they were doing, what they were wearing, and all the rest of it. Mm. A little bit and more culture sensitive. Yeah. Well, you you were told to be a lot more culture sensitive. Well, you, 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 you can't you can't go to the shop yeah. in a bikini because it's yeah. just it's just it's not. Good you good. cover your shoulders exactly. up. You cover your legs. Yeah, just be respectful to the culture. I don't think you should go to any country without at least learning how to say please and thank you in their language and learning yeah. some culture. There's no. I don't get people that like. It's like the people that go on holiday to Spain and then go to like the British pub for their roast dinner. I don't get it. Like, well, so many people live over there that are ex- yeah. expats, mm-hmm. and they're moving yeah. into areas with other expats. 
Well, they create whole areas where they're like, there's whole areas of Spain where there's no Spanish people anymore. Well, no, it's the same in, in South Africa. Mm. You know, my parents and their friends, all expats, never had in houses. Geordies, you name it, Irish, all in the same mountain pot, and yeah. our local pub down the road, which is like walking into a local pub. Yeah, you probably would be able here. to, yeah, you could probably like, if you had a transport machine, you could probably like swap, switch over from mm -hmm. one. Yeah, they're trying to do that in, yeah. in Australia, but they, even the English pubs that English people are managing, and they try and, one was. Tudor pub. Oh yeah, so yeah. That's the first I remember being Tudor pub. So it's made to look like Tudor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they changed and they wanted to make an Irish pub. They changed it some again. But they still don't quite get it, even because they're in Australia. Yeah, it's all got like an Australian twang to it, rather than. Yeah, even they still want to. Well, I suppose it's the same with like the British, uh, like the British pubs. I suppose there's only so much like fish and chips and stuff like that. It's not quite the same, but it's as close as they can get. With yeah, what yeah, with, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I just, I don't get it. It's, it just, I just, the whole point of going there is it needs to like try things out a bit. I feel like it's like if you're going to a resort or somewhere, like if you can and try and go out locally rather than just within like, the area. resort. Yeah, oh, have a look we went to, where you're we going. went to, exactly. to Holland in '94, I think it was. I really love Holland. I have to say, we went with all the scooters. I've never been. I'd love to go. So oh my god! Oh my god! Just the places to go. If you're going to go, I'd advise you not to go to Amsterdam. Way too touristy, massively too busy, and it's so expensive. Well, we went I to the Hague, and that places. was all right. Um, so Utrecht for me was absolutely beautiful, and the thing is, it's only half an hour by train, and they've got like the, the trains are super efficient. They're double decker, and the wheelchair is as Oh wow! Well, yeah. Um, I mean, I've never actually gone with my wheelchair, but that's mainly because well, that's mainly because I'm actually terrified because. If you break the wheelchair, then you're screwed. Yeah, that's and the thing is, my worry. And the thing is, because it's pressure sensitive wheels, but for the Pegasus, I'm screwed without that. Like, if the wheels are broken, then, then you're... it's even harder to push. And that's the, the thing, they don't wheelchair. take care of those sorts of oh, stuff. Oh, God, no, they don't. It just gets And the thing is, it doesn't matter if you've got the insurance, because it's not going to help you while you're at home. No, exactly, because so, they're not going to magically, oh, yes, we do those exactly. specific wheels for your specifically made chair, yeah, I know. And it's and it's I mean you can get like the um, train tickets over there are really really cheap and the yeah. trams are really efficient yeah. as well. Um but yeah you, I mean uh, go somewhere like the track and um, and if you book you can even book into like say some of the youth hustling areas and stuff like that and you can get some really good deals and if say like it's uh, three of us or like four of us or whatever then you can actually almost book a room so I mean it's virtually the same as a hotel. Yeah. Um, um but yeah it's well worth it and um and the people are really nice that. as well actually. We were, we were Wanted to go to Amsterdam. Yeah. But that's just something. I, really I'd like to go to, to the Anne Frank Museum. Well, yeah, because yeah. see, the thing is, you can always end up going, say, if we stayed somewhere a little bit further out of Amsterdam, so it's less expensive. Or well, the thing is, we can always travel in, because that's yeah. what I'm saying, it's only half an hour train ride. So yeah. you could actually travel into Amsterdam for the day, but then still travel out of it at night. At night, you know, Because I'm the problem I find, I suppose, with Amsterdam is that. Especially with with us, is that there's an, it's, it gets so crowded at night, and you will struggle. Like, yeah, you will struggle with the crowds. You will really struggle with the crowds. Like, it is it is so chocker, it's ridiculous. And when it comes to say like um, Amsterdam, because they're trying to get the best out of real estate that they can, everything's really narrow. Whereas in Utrecht, everything's a little bit more open because it's a normal city centre, as opposed to say like for Amsterdam, where they're trying to ram everything in. Yeah, well, where okay. we stayed, we went to the where we stayed, it was like a park, massive big park. Oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. And stuff. But there was like, I don't know how many, couple of thousand back then, I think. And um, the guys were going to the local shop to buy beer. The next morning, <laughs> you saw all these crates of unopened beer because they'd realised they bought light yeah. beer. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to do that, it's light. Could it do yeah. twice as much? That's not the point. No, it's not <laughs> Someone took a photograph of me and they see I'm drinking light beer, what will they think? <laughs>